for those of you who didn't hear the question, um, it was about the affordability of organic and how is there any way we can get the cost of organic down. Um, and I did want to add one more thing, by the way, water is also cheaper than milk. <laughs> um, uh, I, I will um, um, answer, um, at least start out by answering that myself personally, because um, we do have very, very, uh, some of the cheapest food in the world. And I always answer that. Um, and, and by the way, cooking from scratch is, is a very, very affordable way to um, have organic and buying in bulk. But I, that, that's one answer. Um, any other answers out there? Yeah, well, when I grew up in the 1950s, the average household in America was spending 23% of our income for food. Uh, and that seemed normal. You know, and you had the evening meal together with the family and you, you cook from scratch and so on. Most of the food you were buying was produced a lot more regionally than it is now and it was less contaminated. Uh, today, I think the statistics are it's around 11 or 12 percent of the average household income goes for food. And a lot of that goes for eating out in restaurants as well. So I think one of the problems is it's the cost of living across the board. You know, why is it in the European Union that health care is free, you know? Why is it in the European Union that college tuition is free, you know? Why is it in the European Union that there's a robust system of public education? Uh, well, one reason is because rich people have to pay high taxes uh, in the European Union, and rich people pay almost no taxes in the United States. So the high cost of living makes it look like organic food is expensive. Uh, and it is expensive when you're trying to pay the bills. Well, that's why we've got to address the whole thing. Uh, the second thing, this is just popular education. This is what you got to tell people. When you go buy a cheap uh, food in McDonald's or cheap food in Walmart, uh, you know, the price seems pretty cheap. But you got to keep in mind, that's just the first time you're paying for that uh, hamburger or that uh, piece of you know processed junk food uh, you're gonna pay for it again when you go to pay your uh, your health bill uh, because you're gonna get cancer or some heart disease or something else terrible uh, you know you're gonna have to pay the medical bills for 17 percent of the kids in America who now have uh, diagnosed with attention uh, or behavioral attention or uh, behavioral disabilities or so on. So the junk food, you pay for it twice there. Why do you pay for it again every April 15th when you pay your taxes? Because you're subsidizing Monsanto, Cargill, you know, uh, McDonald's and the rest. Uh, you're paying for it. Organic doesn't really get any subsidies. Uh, and uh, you're paying for it the fourth time uh, with your other taxes because you got to clean up the mess that Tyson and Cargill and the rest of them made. Uh, you got to deal with the fact that this industrial agriculture complex, if you add in whacking down all the rainforests in the world, draining all the, uh, uh, all the wetlands in the world, has now succeeded in destabilizing the climate, which is costing us billions and tens of billions and is soon going to cost us hundreds of billions of dollars. Organic, you go, on, you go into your co-op, you buy the... Uh, the uh, organic valley milk, uh, you pay for it once, that's it. You know, the nutritional value of organic food is significantly higher than the 25% across the board premium you pay for organic. So we got our, our work cut out for us, but we're talking about broad societal uh, change. We're talking about a global revolution is what we're talking about. If we're gonna bring organic back to the level uh, where it should be. And the price of organic should never go lower than the fair price it costs to the farmer and the farm worker and the workers throughout the food chain to produce it. I think that was a great description of really the phrase that we need to hold on to, and that's the high price of cheap food. And the high price of cheap food also comes one more step that, that you mentioned, but I want to be sure we don't forget and that is the climate crisis piece. If you look at the carbon footprint of food, the first thing is not transportation. You really have to look at the chemical inputs that have gone in. And a recent study by PepsiCo on their Tropicana orange juice, they were surprised to find that the carbon footprint, the major item, wasn't transportation, it wasn't processing, it wasn't packaging, it wasn't refrigeration. 
It was nitrogen fertilizer, represented 60% of the carbon footprint. So there are the real costs that we're not paying for when we're pay buying cheap food. And we're all going to pay those costs in a huge way. So really, back to your question, right now we have to invest in this for the future of our children. Secondarily, can we support Congressman Kind and others that understand these questions to try and help them move legislation to where we can support a transition that needs to happen tomorrow, not 20 years from now?